Hello, uh, my name is Shang Yu, and uh, I'm a staff engineer at MTS. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about virtual testing and uh, model verification for aerospace structure testing. And at MTS, we have a group of people working on this subject. So this work is definitely uh, uh, a teamwork. So first, I'd like to talk about the industry trend uh, in aerospace testing. So uh, there's a clear trend uh, for model-based system engineering. And uh, uh, that's uh, integrating modeling and physical testing in design and uh, test a new uh, aircraft structure. So it includes, in my view, uh, virtual testing and the hybrid simulation and uh, model assisted uh, testing. So today we are going to work, uh, focus on virtual testing part. And uh, another clear trend is breaking the pyramid, some people call it. So it is uh, uh, to use virtual testing model guided analysis uh, to uh, uh, set up substructure and the component testing uh, with uh, multi axle uh, loading. So to replace some traditional uh, uh, certification tests. And another trend is uh, uh, accelerate durability test uh, by different ways. Uh, some ways are involved in modeling. So you can uh, see the trend is very clear. The testing must be coupled with analysis. Yeah. So uh, virtual testing uh, is uh, one method to achieve this object. So what is virtual testing? And uh, uh, virtual testing uh, by principle is very simple. It is uh, to use analysis software uh, such as uh, Simulink, uh, MSC Nestran, ANSYS, and other software to simulate physical testing. So there are two kinds of uh, virtual testing, two focuses. So one kind focus on the specimen, how you design the specimen, how you design an uh, airplane uh, wing, and uh, where you put the uh, strong material, and uh, where the material should be thin. And uh, uh, so that's, that kind of virtual testing helps you to come up with a specimen design. And uh, another kind of virtual testing focusing on testing, how to set up your test properly, how to conduct the test properly and uh, efficiently and uh, accurately. So uh, the virtual testing uh, I'm going to talk about is focused on the latter, uh, how to set up your uh, physical test. So for example, uh, in here, in this picture, uh, the left is this uh, four channel uh, uh, test system and uh, uh, the, on top there's a, a plate simulating an air, uh, airplane wind and uh, with the four actuators and uh, uh, on the, on the right uh, there's a simulating model simulating the whole uh, system including actuator, servo valve, this specimen and uh, the controller. So, uh, so we can conduct virtual testing first to design this uh, test configuration. Yeah. So you may ask why you want to do virtual testing. Uh, virtual testing is very important because uh, in aero uh, testing and uh, many tests are very complicated. Uh, actuator servo valves are really nonlinear and uh, the test specimen uh, are really uh, expensive and uh, you don't want anything happen to them. Uh, and uh, uh, so those uh, specimens oftentimes have undamped modes uh, when interacting with the actuators and uh, there could be a stability problem. And uh, so you, you need to under, understand that first uh, before you conduct uh, your test. And uh, also, uh, us uh, usually there are many actuators uh, acting on one specimen. So these actuators uh, could have a strong uh, cross-coupling effects. So 
uh, to do accurate test, you need to understand uh, these uh, if, uh, issues and uh, design your test uh, properly. And uh, to do uh, virtual testing, uh, you can understand uh, your uh, the test uh, capacity, and uh, uh, so you can choose the proper uh, actuators, servo valves. Uh, and uh, uh, proper pump and uh, uh, pipes and all those things. And uh, also, a virtual testing can tell you uh, how good the test will be and uh, how well the command will, f the feedback will follow the command and uh, how long you should plan for the uh, transition time. And uh, then uh, that tells you how long the test should be. So you have an idea how long the test and how good the test will be. Yeah. And also, start up a test oftentimes is uh, uh, difficult. And uh, by doing virtual testing, you can tune the PID parameters, filters ahead of time. And uh, uh, that will help you start up the test. And uh, uh, you can understand the uh, flow, uh, flow requirement and uh, uh, so and uh, at the uh, startup time so usually you need to spend a lot of time tuning the PID parameters by doing the virtual testing you have uh, uh, an idea what are these parameters should be yeah. so uh, what is need to be modeled so definitely all the uh, main components in the test system need to be modeled. Uh, controller definitely need to be modeled. Uh, that will include all the parameters uh, that's uh, in the controller, uh, such as the PIDF uh, parameters, uh, forward looping, uh, forward loop filters, and uh, uh, also uh, the model should include the actuators, servo valves, and uh, definitely the model should include the specimen. So now let's talk about piece by piece. First, the controller. And uh, uh, MTS uh, has developed uh, uh, our own controller models over the years. And uh, we have uh, validated these controller models uh, multiple times in different ways. And uh, these uh, controller models include all the parameters uh, in the physical uh, uh, controller that you can adjust. For example, PIDF pa parameters, uh, uh, forward looping filters, and uh, these models can be compiled in an S function format so that they can be solved really fast and uh, uh, can be uh, solved in real time. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, MTS has done uh, multiple tests uh, to validate our controller models. So one test we did was to let a real controller and a virtual controller run side by side. So they both control same plant, including servo valve actu actuator and the specimen. So then same command is sent to a real controller and a virtual controller uh, at the same time, in real time. And uh, uh, a feedback uh, is from the, re uh, the re uh, real plant, uh, uh, from the virtual side and the real side. So if the virtual side response and the real side re response match very well, that means the control model is really accurate. So we have done this kind of uh, uh, validation multiple times and uh, uh, the, on the virtual side, the response matches really good with the, uh, real, uh, the response from the real side. So, uh, on the, uh, and also, as I mentioned, actuator model is very uh, important in here, definitely. And uh, over the year, MTS has developed our uh, actuator models and for different types of uh, actuators. And uh, uh, they are very complicated, including uh, many factors. Uh, and uh, because of the, the time limitation, I cannot go through the details of the actuator models. 
but uh, over the years uh, we have done we have done many uh, validation tests uh, with a different uh, test bed. So the models are very accurate, and uh, again, uh, the models can be uh, written in S function format so that they can be solved really fast uh, in real time. So uh, and also we need to model the specimen, and uh, uh, usually. Uh, real specimens are quite complicated. For example, an airplane wing. Usually, an uh, accurate model involves uh, millions of uh, elements with uh, uh, many, many degrees of freedoms. And to solve a model like that, it takes a supercomputer to run uh, even days, probably, to solve one step. So, that kind of a model definitely cannot be used in this kind of virtual testing because because the solving speed. So the technique we use is uh, to use a reduced order model approach. So reduced order model approach is to linearize the finite element analysis model uh, using mode superposition principle uh, so that uh, it is a uh, it can convert the real FEA model into a reduced sized mass stiffness stamping matrices. And uh, it is a, uh, uh, so this reduced order model can be converted to a frequency response function. So this reduced uh, uh, order model uh, uh, can be expressed in four matrices, ABCD matrices, and can be implemented in a simulic model. Uh, in terms of in terms of a state space uh, model, so in this picture, uh, you can see uh, there's a block uh, testing rig uh, RO, uh, ROM. So that's the reduced order model uh, for this uh, specimen. So with the reduced order model approach, the specimen model can be uh, solved really fast as well uh, in real time. So then we have all our uh, components uh, modeled and uh, the real uh, uh, virtual test system is formed. Yeah. So for this example, and we have this uh, four channel uh, demo system, and uh, as I mentioned, we have a MTS controller model with all the parameters, and we have our activator model, servo valve model, and the hydraulic model, supply model, and also we have a reduced order model for this specimen, so, and that formed uh, a real uh, virtual test system. So now let's see uh, the performance of this model. So as I mentioned, and we did a, a validation test, and uh, uh, we use the same square wave uh, to drive the virtual model and the physical system at the same time, in real time. And uh, in this case, uh, we use a square wave as a command. And uh, this square wave in white and is sent to both virtual model and the physical system. So uh, the, uh, the green is the real uh, physical measurement uh, and uh, the red uh, is the uh, model prediction. And uh, uh, in this case, in this plot, and uh, there are four plots and representing four actuators here. And uh, uh, so at the beginning, we set uh, the P gain uh, to be one for both virtual and physical systems and uh, you can see from the plots the uh, the model prediction matches very well with the physical measurement and uh, uh, the system uh, uh, systems are stable for all the actuators so then next on the virtual side we changed the p gain to be three and uh, on the physical side we kept the P gain to be one. And uh, you can see uh, right away, uh, when we start the uh, virtual model, you can see the spike. And uh, then uh, the virtual model uh, response and the physical measurement, they are different because the P gains are different. Uh, and the virtual side, the response has overshoot. Uh, 
and uh, uh, but uh, they are all uh, stable. Yeah. So then uh, we changed the, the uh, physical side P gain to be three as well. So now the P gains are same, and uh, then you can see the virtual response matches physical response very well. So they all have uh, some uh, level of overshoot, but they are all stable. So then we changed the P gains for both systems to be five. And then you can see both the virtual system and the physical system, uh, they have a overshoot, a high level of overshoot. And for the physical system, uh, for the number one and number two actuators, it shows some levels of instability. And the uh, uh, physical side, uh, the, it is on the verge of instability. Yeah. And the uh, virtual side, physical side matched fairly good. So then we increased the, the P gain further. Uh, for both systems, we changed the P gain to be six. And then you can see right away. So both uh, virtual systems uh, and the physical system, they got unstable. So from this example, you can see our uh, uh, virtual testing system is quite accurate. It can not only predict uh, the response, but also it can predict instability issue. Yeah. So uh, in conclusion, uh, so uh, virtual testing is a very effective tool. Uh, if you do virtual testing first, uh, before you do real uh, test, and uh, you will understand uh, you know, what size of actuator and uh, a servo valve uh, you need, and uh, what the PID tuning parameters should be, and uh, also uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, supply, oil supply uh, is required, and uh, also you can do, uh, you can optimize the transition time so that you can shorten the real uh, durability test. And also, uh, you will understand uh, the article of test and the specimen uh, frequency and the fixture natural frequency and the interactions between actuators, uh, all that. And uh, so uh, virtual testing is very important. And uh, that leads to a uh, next subject. So if uh, you have a real uh, controller, and then you can put the real controller in the loop. And uh, you use the real controller coupled with uh, your actuator models, the specimen models. Uh, by doing that, uh, you will validate uh, the size of your actuators, the servo valve. You will uh, have the initial tunings uh, of your systems, and you will save time uh, on the rework of your configuration and uh, also prevent uh, instability issue, uh, make sure the test is uh, proper. So that's all uh, about virtual testing I'm going to talk today.